couple months ago, I posted this 3x3 spiral. You should totally watch that first, by the way. Link in the description. In that video, I called it the best 3x3 spiral door in Minecraft, which is a bold claim. And as it turns out, that claim was false because I lied. Oh no, Purple lied to his audience. Time to cancel him. Now, don't get me wrong. The animation is perfect, but the speed isn't. It takes a snail paste 1.1 seconds to open. That's way too slow. We need to make it faster. So I teamed up with MQXF and Telio7, and we did, uh, that. Now that's a 3x3 spiral door. Admittedly, it is bigger. It's a bit of a thick boy, a, a bit of a chonker. <laughs> what am I reading? But of course it uses zero ticks and they make everything bigger. Although it's also because we were super OCD while making it, which meant we had to solve some really weird problems, as I will now explain. In my first design, the pistons were powered one redstone tick apart which is two game ticks, so in theory we can make the spiral twice as fast by powering the pistons one game tick apart instead. But that's easier said than done. Getting a one game tick delay between the pistons is easy. You just use the difference in delay between a piston and a repeater. One small problem though, while this does give us delays of two, three, four, five and so on, we're missing one, and there aren't any redstone components that give us a pure one game tick delay. I guess we could just have an input delay and accept it, cause right now that seems like the best option. No, that would be admitting defeat. There has to be another way, and I won't stop until I find it. Yeah, you just use scaffolding or leafstone. They both give block updates on a one game tick delay. Redstone's not that hard. Okay, j just kidding. There's a bit more to it. One game tick repeaters do exist, but they're too thick. So to get it as small as we did, we used a dust redirection bud with scaffolding as the updater for the piston. Still with me? No? Me neither. The final side piston was weird. If we just gave it constant power, it would interfere with the storage pistons below. So what we did instead was we bud powered both side pistons at the same time, but the top one is a note block bud, and the bottom one is an instant repeater with a leaf updater. The note block doesn't add any bed, but the instant repeater does, so the top piston extends without updating the bottom one. And since this wood is now touching the leaves, the piston gets updated after one game tick. That takes care of the closing animation, but in the opening they still retract at the same time. So we have a carefully timed observer pulsing the piston, so it stays extended just long enough to finish the animation. The main reason for the size though is of course the double extender. We couldn't use the standard layout because the absolute fastest it can be is 9 game ticks, so Avogado helped us make a new one. It needs to retract in 8 game ticks, but this layout is actually capable of 7. But you know, we wouldn't want to go too fast, would we? That would be wasteful. The animation's more important, so we deliberately slowed it down. And by slowing it down in the right place, we were able to synchronize the retraction of the center block with the top middle piston. The closing for the bottom is also a bit weird. 
We move the first block like this because this way it moves at normal speed. If we moved it like this instead, the block would reach its destination faster, even though it's being powered at exactly the same time as before. So it wouldn't match the movement speed of the side blocks, and it would trigger our OCD. Oh, and it doesn't push the second block up until after the last side piston. We've got to keep the spiral consistent, you know? That's a lot of OCD for one door. But if you've made it this far through me rambling on about door animations, I'm going to be trying out a layer by layer tutorial, and I want you to let me know should I keep doing these, or should I go back to the old style of tutorial? Please do watch it and let me know what you think of it in the comments. This is all the redstone you'll need. The log, the leaves and the button can be any wood type. The activator rails can be powered rails instead, and the iron trapdoors can be wooden ones instead. Just be careful not to accidentally right click them. The pressure plate has to be iron though. Before we start building, you want to decide which way your door will face. On one side, the door will be indented one block into the wall, and on the other side, it'll be indented three blocks into the wall. So pick the room where you want to have the one block indent, and build the door from that room. You'll need to clear a 4x10 area and dig down seven blocks. your wall is going to be directly above this bottom row. And the doorway is going to be directly above this section of blocks. This is the first layer. The dust on the far left is the input to the door. This is layer 2. These blocks are all normal pistons facing down. When you place this repeater, the piston below will move the glass up, but when you set the repeater to two ticks, it will fix itself automatically. This is layer three. This composter needs to be filled to six levels, which you can easily do with six pumpkin pies. This is layer four. This block is a normal piston facing down. And remember to place the button and the rail, since they can be quite easy to forget while building. This is layer 5. These blocks are all normal pistons facing down, and this block is a sticky piston facing down. And remember to place this redstone torch. This is layer 6. This block is a normal piston facing down. This is layer 7. Make sure you don't accidentally stand on the pressure plate, because if you do, it'll move this row of blocks and you'll have to put them back. This is layer 8. Make sure you place the armor stand last, because otherwise it'll do the same thing as accidentally standing on the pressure plate. This block is a normal piston facing down. This is layer 9. The composter only needs to be filled up one level. And this block is a sticky piston facing down.
This is layer 10. This block is a sticky piston facing down. When you place the repeater in the top right, you'll hear some pistons firing, but this doesn't mess anything up, so you don't have to do anything. This is layer 11. This block is a normal piston facing down. And this is a sticky piston facing down. This is layer 12. These blocks are all sticky pistons facing down. And this is the 13th and final layer. The composter needs to be filled up 4 levels. Once you're done, you want to go around the door and update these 3 sticky pistons if they aren't already extended. Now you want to make sure that the floor is like this with a block here, and no blocks in this 1x2 gap. And finally, you want to make sure that this block in the floor is solid. It can't be anything like glass, a slab, or a stair. And now, we can test the door. This door wouldn't be complete without a proper input, so this is how you toggle it with pressure plates without input delay. And that's the end of the video. Please do let me know down in the comments if I should carry on doing layer by layer tutorials like this, or if I should go back to the old style. If you get stuck, you can find a world download in my Discord server, link to that will be in the description. Anyway, like, sub, and I'll see you in the next video.